a true invention of the new surprises you. It's, uh, and this is, I think, Hegel's Licht der Vernunft. It's not a, sim a, a reason hidden from the very beginning controlling it all. It's kind of profit, a profit from chance. You say too much, quickly you try to um, accommodate or to somehow integrate that excess and, uh, and in a way you, uh, and you succeed. And I think this would even have been a Hegelian reading of the death of Christ, you know. Christ died. It was a shock, they didn't know what. Then somebody said, my God, why don't we turn this into a triumph, no? Like, and so on. So, uh, from here, we should go a step further. Hegel and contingency. I think that Hegel is absolutely not a philosopher of contingency in the sense that there is a deeper necessity which only expresses or articulates itself through contingencies. Hegel's deepest thought is that Necessity retroactively emerges in a contingent way out of contingency. And here, I'm really sad not to have time, here you can see the materialist core of Hegel's even most speculative propositions. For example, what would have been Hegel's reading of Julius Caesar crossing the Rubicon? It's not, it was predestined, he had to do it. It was no. At that point, the situation was totally open. But once Caesar crossed the Rubicon, he, as it were, recreated his destiny so that it retroactively uh, appeared necessary. I think I should quote here, uh, I got it from a French theorist, a wonderful small passage from French journal Le Monde, which refers to some French voting on uh, May 8, 1995. At that point, Balladur was, Edouard Balladur was one of the candidates, and, uh, and uh, in Le Monde they wrote, if, this was before this election, if Balladur will be elected, then we can say that his election was necessary. No, in the sense of something happens, and once it happens, it retroactively becomes necessary. I think that Hegelian uh, necessity always has this retroactive status.